Well, my uh, sermon for this Christmas morning is entitled Sing, and I hear you all singing. I know it's not so easy first thing in the morning, and definitely got a little louder when you came in, Elizabeth. It was good. Now, last night, it was, uh, the choir was really, really kicking. You know, they were, they were excellent, and Rachel. So uh, a, lot of, a lot of song and, and, and joy filling the air. Uh, but, I, but today's readings really talk about song a lot, so I want to I speak to that and, and begin by hearing again a few verses from the readings uh, we've just heard that were appointed uh, for this Christmas, one of, one of three possible selections. And this uh, includes one from Isaiah, one from the psalmist, uh, a few lines from the, from the Hebrews, and one from John. Break forth into singing, you ruins of Jerusalem, Isaiah 52. Sing to the Lord a new song, for he has done marvelous things, Psalm 98. Long ago God spoke to our ancestors in many and various ways by the prophets, but in these last days he has spoken to us by his Son, whom he appointed heir to all things, through whom he also created the world. He is the reflection of God's glory and the exact imprint of God's very being, and he sustains all things by his powerful word. And the word became flesh and lived among us, and we have seen his glory, the glory as of a father's only son, full of grace and truth. Of course, from John 1, the great prologue to his gospel. And uh, some points about these readings. Point one. There is singing involved. Perhaps in no other season is there such glorious singing as in Christmas season, though Easter comes close, and none in any case so filled with song, both sacred and secular. Uh, when I first came here a number of years ago, Maria Galli was the parish secretary, and beginning in October, she'd tune it to the all time, always Christmas music radio station in the Hudson Valley, 92.1. And I, I, I grew to dread it. <laughs> but now I listen to it. I texted Maria, I said, I'm listening to 92.1. I don't know how many more times I can hear Mariah Carey, but <laughs> run, run, Rudolph. Some new, some old, some profound, some silly, but sing we do. With the radio, caroling in groups, although that, uh, that tradition, uh, we need to recover a little bit. It's been cold, though. You know. And, of course, in church. And would that more would come and sing along. And singing, you know, is not just a human thing, but one of the things that we share with uh, other animals. Of course, birds, whales, occasional, occasional dog and howling wolf at the moon. If we broaden song, as I think we ought to, to include dance and movement. Uh, well, how many amazing and sometimes rather strange and, and, and amusing are, are mating dances, both among animals and humans, of course. Uh, courtship rituals. And this, you know, one of the great bases for song, although all occasions in life. Now, the psalmist sings in Psalm 98 that the lands are called to sing as well, not just humans, not just animals, but the lands. Let, let the sea make a noise and all that is in it. Let the rivers clap their hands and let the hills ring out with joy before the Lord. So there is song there and there are perhaps song, sacred songs sung by the stars. Uh, so thought the ancients. And who can say what our new telescopes will hear someday? Sing to the Lord a new song indeed. Song is somehow especially appropriate for worship. Well, worship and love, right? Eros and agape. Song is sacred. God only not, not only approves of it, but absolutely and positively commands us to sing in these psalms and sing to the Lord a new song. Sing, as, as one of our great hymns has it, in wonder, love, and praise. And even in suffering, sing, as the prophet commands 
the ruins of Jerusalem, Isaiah. Sing, Isaiah uh, 9, uh, 52, sing you ruins of Jerusalem. Even if you have been destroyed by the conquerors, your temple desecrated and reduced to rubble, your people killed and carried off in bondage, your city abandoned to jackals and lions, your countryside desolate, even so sing, for redemption is coming. God is on the move. And in our lives too. Have faith and hope, even in the midst of suffering and what can call for despair, what seems black, what seems hopeless. Sing. And this, of course, if we think of the great black church tradition and also the, the, the black uh, cultural tradition of the blues, singing out of suffering, singing out of spirituals, great power, great beauty. This is a wonderful part of the tradition of sacred music in general, to pull from all of our experiences, the psalmist knows, an anatomy of the human heart, and bring it in song before God. So song is point one, point two. How do we know? How do we know that, that, that God is going to, uh, you know, come back and deliver us? How can these ruins of Jerusalem know? Where's the evidence? Show me the signs. Well, you've long ago heard the prophets speak in the name of God, prophecies of, of God's forgiveness and redemption, the return of the exiles, the restoration of Zion, and, and you, they, we have witnessed the fall of great empires, the fee, freeing of the captives, the return to Jerusalem. Isaiah was right. They came home. They rebuilt. We saw, you've seen, the prophets vindicated. And they also spoke of one who is to come. The virgin will bear a child. He will be called Wonderful Counselor, Prince of Peace, a new, a new son of David, a Messiah. And you have seen a new song, a new word, in the Word made flesh. That was a new thought that came only with Jesus, that not only would a new descended according to the flesh son of David come to be the Messiah, but the, the word, God, eternal, God from God, light from light. In the beginning was the word, the word will become flesh. Such a word as no song ever sung before, but which many have sung since. So many of our Christmas great carols sing of the birth of this baby, God made flesh, word made flesh. A word combining heaven and earth, human and divine. A perfect image of the Almighty, as, as the Hebrews writes. Perfect image of the Almighty, yet born from the womb of the young virgin, a baby wrapped in cloth, laid in a manger as our crushes show, without a proper home, yet worshiped by both shepherds and magi, such a song, such a thing has never been seen or heard before. So reaching both high and low, heaven and earth, strong and weak, vulnerable yet destined to become the most powerful and influential person in human history. His story has been told and told again over the two millennia since his birth. The song ever sung, the song always knew. And the song of course includes both his birth that we sing today and his death that we sing on Good Friday. Were you there? Such a song includes also the hope of the Easter songs, the great resurrection hymns. Such, such a life and such a trajectory and such a song gives us, gives us hope and guidance into how we are to live our life. Such a spirit it gives us power and courage to do the things that we know are right. And such a friend we have in Jesus, as one of the great songs has it, that even uh, as judge, we who are sinners and broken can have faith and hope that we will be clothed in love and grace. No matter what we've done, no matter what place we find ourselves stuck in, no matter how dark it seems. And so we are called to love and serve the world in his name, to follow his example, to make his song ours, tuned in as many distinctive versions 
as we are individuals and peoples. So there is the evidence, the prophet's fulfillment, the life and, traject and, res and ministry and resurrection of Jesus and the power of the Holy Spirit in the centuries since then. Point three, ready to go. Here we are this morning. A little tired, a little cold. You open your presents yet? No, right? You have to wait. So you're a little, a little anxious. Get home. How long is this going on? It's been some bitter weather, you know. And we'll go out, and the world will be challenging. And the new year will have great dangers, darkness. But we, who have faith and hope, will be bearing a new light into the darkness. The true light, as John says, which enlightens everyone has come into the world and darkness has not and will not overcome it. And we're not going to be the people who uh, let it go out. Can I hear an amen? Amen. Yeah. Like John, we're called to be witnesses to the light. Not only to point to it, but to live it. And this is our time. This is our life. Our, li our little light, let it shine. Our chance to make a new song. Teach our children the old ones and invite them to join us on that long march to a better world. Are you ready to go? Maybe you're thinking after the presents are unwrapped. <laughs> the family feast all cleaned up. And a little, little break of a week or so, vacation. New Year celebrating is over. Then, then I'll get back to the work of, you know, saving the world. You know, all the poor folks trapped in airports are home. They've, they've just got to rest. Well, even in this holiday season, as we sing and celebrate, perhaps even more than in other times, uh, we can make our singing and celebration part of what it means to bring Christ's light into the world. It's not all going out to soup kitchens. It's singing. It's bearing joy and, and, and good humor and, and a light heart. Be people of, of joy as well as earnest well-meaning and good, you know, good doing. Like faith and hope. Have fun. Laugh. Clap your hands like the river. Ring out with joy like the hills. That's what the psalmist tells us to do. That is, be joyful naturally, like nature is full of joy. Even in winter, I, you know, I was looking out today at the oak tree. And you know how oak trees, they got, this, they got some hanging on leaves still, right? What's a, they just had a huge wind and cold, and there's some leaves thinking, I'm going to hang on. You know, they're, they're diluted. <laughs> you know, it's, it's going to be new leaves. It's not going to be them coming back. But it's just kind of remarkable anyway to see how, how tenacious. You know, it's just nature is full of things like that. Two doves flew over here as I was walking into church. I mean, just like a Holy Spirit thing. So just join with nature and, and, and celebrate life. We're made to hug and smile, right? It's been kind of held back so much with COVID. And we know it's flu season and all that. We've got to still be cool. But we know from how babies flourish when they are held and smiled at or fail to flourish when deprived of that, how important for us it is to have that contact. And I'll, I'll end with sharing the story, uh, you know, uh, that we have, you know, and, and perhaps this is why we celebrate baby Jesus. You know, he's, he's extremely cute and huggable. You know, baby Jesus, wrapped in the little swaddling bands and laid in the manger all the animals coming and like oh and shepherds and the magi you know it's to remind us that we have babies that babies are the word become flesh life become real god become a human the divine incarnate you know as a newborn first it started off small Smallest, little baby coming, you know, born into the world. And if you don't have one of those babies around in your own life right now, you know, even grandchildren, like I don't, I'm, I depend on others, like the babies that were brought in. I, I, Heather was here with Jacob uh, last, last time, and she had shown me some pictures of him the week before. I said, oh, show me the pictures of little Jacob. He's a few months old now, and uh, he's discovered his toes. Oh, those are amazing. I'm going to put them in my mouth. 
Well, so did baby Jesus, right? It, God had to figure out what those were at the end of those things. That they're part of him. Wow, that was amazing. Isn't it wonderful? Sing to the Lord a new song. In Christ's name, amen. amen.